All right. You already know all this. I'll let it sit on the recording for a moment. All right. Point slope form. I am going to write it out, and you guys are going to look at it, and you're going to know already a whole lot of stuff about it once you see it written. Everybody cool? Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is write it out. Y2 minus Y1 equals M bracket X2 minus X1. Have you seen all of those things before? Yes. Yes. We've seen y2, y1, x2, x1 in slope. And the rise over run version of it. And we only have coordinates. Exactly. And we know that m is slope. Yes? Everybody cool? Everybody good? Okay. So now I will tell you the only thing that is new about this. This and this, y2 and or y1 and x1, are points, not points. They are a point on the graph that you know. So they are similar to a y-intercept in y-intercept in slope-intercept form, right? You know that this 7 is a point on the graph, yeah? The point on the graph that it is, is 0, 7. Everybody cool? Well, here it's the same thing. All right? So now I'm going to write out a formula, an equation, with these points filled in, y1 and x1. And you guys are going to talk for a second, and you're going to see if you can figure out how to graph it without doing a table of values. Everybody okay with that? All right. So this is what you're going to get. Y minus 4 equals 3 X plus 2. Do you think, without actually graphing it, just stop for a moment, that you could graph this? You have a slope, you have some points. Do you think you can figure out how to graph it? Okay. Without graphing it, talk to your neighbor, tell him or her what point you would start at and where you would go from there. Hmm? Well, we know Ramdeer is never here, so you never get to discuss it. Try to do Talk to Gerard. I used to talk to Gerard a lot. <laughs> and I still do. Okay, see, so 3 equals M, and then rise over run. You would grab it, it would be 3 equals Y1 minus Y2. We already know what y1 is. It's 4. So it'd be, it'd be 4 minus y over 2. No. No, 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 no. Y. Think, Noah. Think. Is it, is it 2 minus 1? Yeah, it's 2 minus 1. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint now that I've heard some people discuss things. What does that symbol mean? Equals. Equals. Everybody with me? Oh. There's an X, there's a Y, correct? Can you think of a number that you could put in for X and that you could put in for Y that would make this easily true? Uh, if you put 0 in. Okay, so 0 minus 4 is negative 4 equals 3 times 0 plus 2, which is 2. Does negative 4 equal 6? Yes. No. 
so we cannot sub in zero. But you're on the right track. Zero has something to do with it. Would anybody like to pick up the first clue that Gerard has thrown down for us? Uh, Kale. Y negative two, if you make y negative two, then you and make x zero. Okay. So if y is negative two, negative two minus four is negative six. Yes. And x, you said make it zero. Three times zero plus two is two. Three times two is six. Does negative six equal six? No. But again, believe it or not, you are even you are even closer now to the right answer. Hannah's gone. Wait. Shoot. What? Oh, shoot three. Y is ten and x is zero. Yeah. Okay. Ten. Which, yeah, would make them both six. So everybody's cool with that, right? Now, did that work? And it required a bit of guess checking, didn't it? Is everybody cool? But it will work. Everybody all right with that? Okay. May I offer you this as a piece of advice? What if I put in this point? What is 4 minus 4? 0. What is negative 2 plus 2? Times 3? Does 0 equal 0? Yeah. Where did I pick negative 2 and 4 from? Whoa. Pick it up what I'm putting down? Does everybody see it? If the point works in the equation, is the point on the line? Okay. So now, what can I do? Do I have the point I can start from? What is it? Negative 2, 4. Because that point works in this line, doesn't it? Does it not make the left side equal the right side? So does that point work in the line? Now, once I have one point and a slope, do I have the rest of the line? How? Because all the points are going to be that slope away. A rise of what? Positive 3, up to 7, and a run of what? Positive 1 to negative 1. Negative 1, 7. Where else could I go? Down 3 to 1, and a run of negative 1 to what? Negative 3, 1. Does everyone see how it works? So, I told you that these points are points on the graph that you know. But they're not quite, are they? What did we actually have to do to make it work? I had plus 2 with the x's and minus 4 with the y's. What did I have to do to actually make it a coordinate that worked? Switch the signs. Everybody with me? Because then I can make 0 and 0, and that's the easiest way to do it. Is everybody good? All right, let's practice actually reading it. State the attributes of the line. So what do I need to know? I need to know anything this tells me. What does this construction tell me? What information does it give me? A slope. What is the slope of this line? Were I to graph it? Negative two, Negative two thirds. What else does this tell me? The line goes through a certain point, doesn't it? What point? E? E? Negative two. One. Negative two. 
because 1 minus 1 will get me 0, negative 2 plus 2 will get me 0, then 0 will equal 0. Does everybody understand? Is there an infinite amount of other points that will work? Yes. But to find them, we have to do guess and check like we were doing with 10 and 4. The easiest point to lock in is the one that makes 0 equal 0, yes? So what's the next one? What's the M in number 2? Negative 1 fourth. And it goes through what point? Negative 3 and positive 4. Everybody okay? Alright. Now, here's where I get very frustrated with many math students. Number 3 looks different. Some of you will have the audacity to tell me that you don't know how to do that because it looks different. That is, of course, saying you couldn't add you couldn't add those two because they look different because I didn't put the little German cross on the seven. That's, of course, poo, isn't it? You can add that. You know it's 10, even though it looks different. So don't give me any of that horse pucky. What is this guy's slope? Yeah, slope of 1. What's his point? Negative 2, negative 1. See how easy it is? Because, of course, you could put those brackets in there, and what would be the coefficient that we never write? 1. Everybody good? Okay. Look at number four. It looks different. What is it? What's the point? The, oh, sorry. The slope is one half. I should have used a different color. And what's the point? Negative four. Zero. Why zero? Because, put negative 4 in for x, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, what would y have to be to equal that? 0. Everybody still good? Alright. 5. Right, I heard somebody say it. The slope is negative 1, and what are the points? Negative 5. Negative 3. Yay! And finally, an easy one. Takes us back to the very first one to make sure we've gone full circle. What's the M? 4 fifths. And what's the point? 1 ten. Can everybody deal with point slope form? Do you see how it could be your new bestie? Yeah. Slope intercept is great, right? if you know the y-intercept and if it's not a fraction. Point slope form from point slope form always works. Michaela? What do you mean by order? Well, of course it has to be in the right order because that's coordinates on a graph and x always goes first. Cool? Everybody good? Yeah, yeah? Picking up what I'm putting down? Read my mail? Mow my lawn? Turn the page over. This should take two seconds to graph, shouldn't it? Okay. Now, stop for a second. Don't write down what I'm about to do. Do not. I'm going to write it in red so you don't write it. Red, danger, danger, danger. y minus 2 equals 2 thirds x plus 1. y minus 2 equals 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds. y equals 2 thirds x plus 2 and 2 thirds. What form is that? Slope intercept. Could we graph it? Yes. Why would it be a pain? Fractional y intercept. 
So now we're going to look at that. And now that we know point slope form, it's our buddy, right? What's the point that we have? Negative 1, 2. And what's our slope? 2 thirds. So graph it. Negative 1, 2. And a slope of positive 2 thirds up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3. Everyone agree? And then what do I do with that? Put a line right through. Ah! Son of a... Now, allow me the, the uh, indulgence of zooming in to 400%. What was our y-intercept? Two and two-thirds. What was our y-intercept? One, two, oh, and two-thirds. See how they're related? Yeah. Okay. I will zoom us back down to normal size. So... Why did I write this in red and tell you not to write it down? What is the point of that? Pardon? Not so much that. I'm trying to get you to realize that all of these forms are interchangeable. You can move between them using your basic algebra skills. Okay? And we can go one better... We know that this is m, yes? Right? But we also know m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So could I put that whole construction back into point slope if I needed to? Could I put that whole construction into slope intercept if I needed to? Does everybody see where I'm going with this? Eventually, I'm going to give you a giant toolkit of equations for graphing. You don't even have to remember them. If you look in your data book, they're all on the front page. But you will pick the one that works for your situation. What if there isn't one that works for your situation? Well, then you might start with one and manipulate it to look like the other. Is everyone okay with that? We've done a lot of manipulating of equations this year already, right? We move stuff around in the very first unit to find different parts, volume or surface area or slant or whatever. And now we're doing it here. So, number eight. What do you know about it? You guys go ahead and graph that. Should take about two seconds. Is every pony good? Because of course I'm a bit of a brony. I love my little pony. It's a great cartoon. I highly recommend it. I do not recommend Equestria Girls. That's creepy. When they go to high school. When they go to high school and they're walking around on their hind legs. My sister watches that. Yeah, that's crap. But My Little Pony is good stuff. I saw an episode of iCarly I'd never seen before last night. I didn't think it was possible. I go nuclear. It was a particularly funny one. I enjoyed it immensely as I ate my pierogies and farmer sausage. Because that's what we had for dinner last night. Victorious is pretty good. Victorious, I, I enjoyed the... 
crossover episode, I haven't given Victorious an, a chance on its own. But the crossover episode was particularly hilarious. And my son loves it because there's a kid on Victorious named Sinjin, which blows his mind. It's not cruel enough that there's a bad guy in a James Bond movie named Sinjin. That means nothing to my son. But that there's a kid on Victorious named Sinjin makes him very happy. Is everyone okay with this? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, ooh, <clears throat> Bartharoo, read that question. And before you do anything, tell me some stuff that you know. Talk to your neighbor if you need to. That question gives you a lot of information, doesn't it? The particular is the opposite. Uh, that fancy word. Yeah, that fancy word that we learned a couple of days back. Yes. What's that fancy word called? Perpendicular. Reciprocal, he means. Yeah, negative, negative reciprocal. It's like a Harry Potter word. We're not talking about that. Harry Potter and the negative reciprocal? Yeah. Two, two lines that are perpendicular across the y-axis. The equation of one line is positive. And the other line is the opposite. Okay, everybody have had a few moments, and I hear some people that are no longer talking about math, so we'll talk about what this tells us. What does perpendicular tell us? If that line has a slope of m, which I will highlight in yellow, then the other line, which I will highlight in blue, must have a slope of what? Negative 1 over m. Right? That's information that it's given us. The lines cross at the y-axis. What does that tell us? Both lines are going to hit each other where? Y. On the y-axis. If they're going to hit each other, then what does that tell us about their y-intercepts? Are the same. So before we've done any math, we already know that the slope of the other line, we're going to know its slope, and we're going to know its y-intercept, aren't we? Well, let's do that. The yellow guy is right here. Do I know its slope and its y-intercept right now? Do I know its slope and its y-intercept right now? No, i got to move it around first, don't I? I mean, I know it, but you guys would probably want to move it around. So what would we do? What's going to move? Just the y, because he's already alone. And if I move him, he's going to be positive, yes? So 2x plus 8 equals y. Do I now know my y-intercept and my slope? Do I now know my other slope? Do I now know my other y-intercept? Yes. So... This is what I've got. The other one, what do I need? First, I've got to check the slope. What's the slope that I need? Negative 1 half is my new m. And my y-intercept is still 8, yes? So, write out the equation. <coughs> y equals... <coughs> excuse me. Negative 1 half x plus 8. Are we okay with that? Is everyone all right with that? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Could I also have done it graphing-wise? Yeah. Sure I could. Put the first guy on here at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Slope of 2, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, to get me this. 
and I know that my other line must go through here at a slope of negative one half. Down one over two, down one over two, right through there. And there is my 90. Is everybody good? Is everybody good? Once, twice, twice? Yeah? All right. Um, let me just check your outline here. I want to see. Joel Meb or uh, Noah Meb or your textbook for a sec? Go for it. Go. God, man. I organized. Yes, organized. That's exactly the word that jumps to my head when I grab this textbook from you. Ladies and gentlemen, listen up, please. I want to do one more thing to make sure you guys are really okay. This, you got some blank space at the bottom, yeah? You have to create the equation. How would you do that? Well, what do you have there? X's, Y's, and M's. You have X's and Y's. That's it. No. You got no M's. No X's. So what do you? How are you going to find the M, Alan? Alan. So the M is 4 plus 7 over negative 5 minus 3, yeah? Which is what? 11 over negative 8. Cool? Do I have an M now? Yeah. Do I have two points from the graph? How many points do I need to do the form I just taught you? One. It's point slope form, yes? So can I write the equation with that point? Yeah. What would it be? Mm -hmm. Y plus 7 equals negative 11 eighths bracket X minus 3. Oh. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. How would I write the equation with that point? Y minus 4 equals negative 11 eighths X plus 5. Are they the same? Oh. Those look totally different. Are they the same equation? Yeah. Let's find out. We'll start with this guy. 
y plus 7 equals negative 11 over 8 x minus 3, right? Tidy that up. y plus 7 equals negative 11 8 x plus 33 over 8, correct? Everybody with me still? y equals 33 over 8 becomes 4 and 1 8, yes? Right? So this becomes negative 11 over 8x minus 7, correct? Because this has to be negative. Everyone cool with that? 4 and 1 8 minus 7 is what? Four minus seven is negative three, but I gotta go one eighth to the right, so it's minus two and seven eighths. Is everybody cool with that? Right? Now we're in slope intercept form. Is everybody good? Now watch. I also have y minus four equals negative eleven eighths x plus five, which is y minus four equals negative eleven eighths x minus uh, 55 over 8, yes? Which is, 8 goes into 55, 6 and 7 eighths, yes? Everyone cool with that? This is negative 4, so I gotta come over and do what? Add 4, right? Negative 6 and 7 eighths plus 4. Negative 2 and 7 eighths. Is everyone okay with this? Why am I showing you it? Because both of these answers are correct. What if you do a bunch of work and you get that answer on your provincial, but that's not there? What do you got to look for? One with the same slope, and you might need to check a second point. Does everyone understand why I showed you this? Yes. Is it the red or the green that's bugging you, Supreet? The red. It's Christmas. Which part? Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive. Or negative 11 over 8 times negative 3 is positive. Yeah, I get that. But like at the bottom, it's negative 2. Okay, well, that's positive 33 eighths, yes? Yeah. Which is 4 and 1 eighth, yes? Yeah. Then i got to subtract 7. Because this guy's got to come over here, doesn't he? To get y by himself. So I had to do minus 7. Now... I did that in my head by doing this. There's 4, yes? 4 and 1 8 would be right here, wouldn't it? So if I do minus 7 from 4, I get to negative 3, yeah? But I didn't really start here. I started 1 8 over, yeah? So I must end 1 8 over here, which is negative 2 and 7 8. I understand that. A great many of you haven't been taught to subtract fractions this way. A great many of you have been taught to the common denominator, subtract. Because that's the way your elementary school teachers were taught. And they taught you that way without actually thinking about math. This is real easy to do in your head, isn't it? It's just one shifted over. Same way you subtract big numbers. 74 minus 37. Right? You do 70 minus 40 and then shift, right? Same thing with fractions. But you guys were done a disservice and didn't get taught things like that because people were too busy te teaching you 9, 18, 27, 36, 32, all those tricks without actually stuff that would be useful. You guys know that one, right? The multiples of nine. I don't even know it because I just memorized it, but it's got something to do with your knuckles and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah, it. I see, like, I don't know how to do it. 
one times one, nine times one is nine. One times two is eighteen. See one and then eight. Oh my God! Three times nine is twenty-seven. Four times nine is thirty-six. Forty-five. Fifty-four. Sixty-three. Why didn't you just memorize it? That's my point. Yes. And then, and then it stops there. Ninety. Yeah, it goes up to it works up to ten. Unfortunately, our number system goes slightly past ten. Then you use your toes. I am waiting for the day that I see a grade 10 kid take his shoes off in the provincial. I'm going to watch all you guys wear flip-flops to your provincial so you can count on your toes, too. Now I can get up to 20. <laughs> on the no calculator section, I'm good to go. Jimmy can get up to 21. <laughs> Lucky him. Yeah. Who? Because he's got an extra toe. Who's got an extra toe? I don't know. He just said Jimmy. So Who's Jimmy? <laughs> no. Oh. I don't know anybody in high school. Well, James's nickname would be Jimmy. And so would that other James. Jim is the nickname for James. Yes. Jimmy, come on. I thought No. A British person would not go by Jim because British people use their words. Jim is specifically an American thing. Kind of like William becoming Bill. Yeah, like my mom's friend's yeah. name. If you're Bob Bill. Bill. Bob and Robert. Yeah. Yeah. He, but he called himself Rob. And yep. Bob. John is already short. People nickname guys named John. The shortest name in the world, Jack. It's the exact same length of name. Names should be shortened. Alon, are you Jewish? Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, we were talking about that, not about you particular, about Jewish, the Jewish faith in general, and how I don't know any Jewish people in all of Chilliwack and Abbotsford. I know none. And the kids are like, "Yeah, you do." No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Alon Singh. <laughs> And that's the second time this has happened to me because all of you, of course, know Harinder Singh, I am sure. She's in the 11th grade. Her name is Harinder Singh. So where is she from? Of course she's from India. Nope, born and raised in Italy. Is she Yes. Her name is Harinder Singh. <laughs> born and raised in Italy. And she was in my grade 9 class as an ESL student. I assumed that the language was some sort of language from India, either Punjabi or Hindi or one of them. And she's like, no. What? I speak Italian. <laughs> Harinder Singh. See. Oh, interesting. So yes, I was, I, I, I am, it was interesting to me. So, because you're a perfect example, because in the Jewish faith, your mother is what makes you Jewish. And obviously, your dad's last name is Singh. Yes. 